Thanks for joining us, and welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to WWDC 2015. All right, so there's Apple Music, iOS 9, and OS 10 El Capitan. Yeah, these are just a few of the things that Apple unveiled at their developers conference this year, WWDC. But even after the keynote, I'm sure plenty are still wondering, okay, what does it all mean for me though? Well, if you choose, you can say goodbye to Spotify and hello to Apple Music on June 30th, when you'll be able to test out Apple's new music streaming service for three months for absolutely free, and after that for just $9.99 a month. What this will bring you is the ability to stream and download for offline any song available on iTunes, but also access to the 24-7 Beats 1 radio and more. Now, Apple made sure to stress that experts choose the music for these stations instead of coded algorithms picking the next song. They're really pressing on bringing the humanism back into music that caters for a more enjoyable experience. With that, there's also a connect section of the app that brings the user closer to the artist they like, giving them exclusive videos, music, photos, and other content all curated to their music preferences. And with Drake as a celebrity co-sign, OVO fans can peep his next album release on the new platform. It's really a new take at the one-stop shop trend that apps are going for nowadays, but hints at being more of a natural experience thanks to its iOS integration with Siri and more. So if you want, you can go, hey Siri, play the number one song on the charts this month, and Apple Music will make it happen. Available for iOS, Macs, and PCs later this month, even Android will be able to join the party this fall. And with a family plan available to have up to six different users active on one account for just $15 a month, mom, dad, and the whole crew can enjoy their own Apple Music experience from Bono to Drizzy. And well, the time to update your iOS device will be here soon enough, but luckily, you won't have to delete everything just to make it happen this time. Yes, iOS 9 will be here, and while it does have a reduced download size, it also has much more. So Apple introduced two new built-in apps called News and Wallet, where one presents a Flipboard-like news experience to check out articles about what you want and from who you want in one native app, while Wallet introduces a new way to keep your cards under control when using Apple Pay. It even now features the ability to import all of your precious credit and reward cards and keep them all in one place. While other apps like Notes received to-do lists, Sketch, and new photo options, what seemed to steal the show were the new multitasking features on the iPad. Slide over, split view, and picture in picture all give the iPad what many claim to be what it's needed for so long to become more useful. What does each do? Well, slide over is more for opening another app without having to leave the other while Split View lets you actively work between both scaled to your own preference. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It really brings a more functional use to the iPad, and with other features like a new shortcut bar, easy text selection, and keyboard shortcuts, it seems to be the update iPad lovers have waited for. But they'll also be sad to hear only certain features work with certain models. But don't worry, it's not just the iPad getting all the cool stuff, as Siri is all around just smarter on every device too. Make reminders for when you get to your car or to show photos from when you were somewhere specific. Siri can do it with iOS 9. Alright, so I'll put it like this, iOS 9 really seems like it's aiming to improve the functionality of your device. I mean, with the new proactive assistant feature, your iPhone will literally learn from what you commonly do during your days and make suggestions for what you want to do every day after. A little creepy at first, yes, but awesome at the same time? Again, I'd say yes. Now this event had a lot to take in, trust me, by the time it was all over, I had a headache. But that wasn't even all of it. The new OS version for Macs was introduced under the name El Capitan. While the name seems a little funny to me, the enhancements are legit, with new split view, mission control, and spotlight options. And while I've managed to still hold out on getting an Apple Watch, the unveiling of WatchOS 2 has really actually tried to get me. New time-lapse watch faces, nightstand mode, and more show signs of improving what before hasn't convinced me to go out and buy the pricey wearable. WatchOS 2 and El Capitan are both available for developers now, but the public can expect the free downloads this fall. Yeah, it's a lot. I guess all we can do for now is sit and wait.